afternoon. Welcome to the public hearing of Sewage Town Council, July 15th, 2019, at 415 in Council Chambers. So I will read, uh, first of all, a statement from the Chair. This public hearing is convened pursuant to Section 464 of the Local Government Act, RSBC, 2015 to allow the public to make representation to council respecting matters contained in zoning amendment bylaw number 1085.121 2019 every person present who believes that their interest in property is affected by the proposed bylaw shall be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard respecting matters contained in the proposed bylaw none of you will be discouraged or prevented from making your views known However, it is important that you restrict your remarks to matters contained in the proposed bylaw. When speaking, please proceed to the microphone and commence your remarks by clearly stating your name and address. If they wish, members of council may ask you questions following your presentation. However, the function of council at this public hearing is to listen to you rather than to debate the merits of the proposed bylaw. <clears throat> in accordance with the council procedure bylaw, presentations by members of the public shall be limited to a maximum of five minutes each. If a person has additional information that he is unable to provide within that time frame, he shall be given further opportunity to address council after all other interested members of the public have been heard a first time. Please refrain from applause or other expressions of emotion during this public hearing so that we may ensure as impartial a hearing as possible. After this public hearing is adjourned, council members will not speak to the public on this matter until after the matter has been dealt with at a public meeting. After this public hearing has concluded, council may without further notice give whatever effect council believes proper to the representations made at this hearing. So confirmation of advertising and posting requirements. Notice of this public hearing was given in accordance with the Local Government Act and the Community Charter by distributing the notice as follows. Publishing in two consecutive editions of the Asuias Times on July 27th, sorry, June 27th and July 4th, 2019, placing the notice on the bulletin boards in the Town Office and Planning and Development Services Department on June the 18th and posting the notice on the town's website on June 27th and distributing via e-news on July the 2nd. Summary of the staff report. The purpose of this meeting is to seek public input on zoning bylaw amendment number 1085.121-2019 which received first and second reading on June the 17th, 2019. Zoning Amendment Bylaw Number 1085.121-2019 proposes to change the zoning from M1 General Industrial to M1 General Industrial Site Specific on property legally described as Lot 1, District Lot 2450S, SDYD Plan 51007, Address 11609 115th Street. So I will ask for a report from our senior planner, Mr. MacArthur, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the purpose of this report is to request that Council consider Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 1085.121-2019. The amending bylaw, if adopted, would allow for a site-specific cannabis production facility to be located at 11609 <coughs> 115th Street. First and second readings of the amending bylaw were granted on June 17th. The subject property is zoned M1 General Industrial, as uh, uh, the Mayor mentioned. Section 4.8 of the Zoning Bylaw provides an opportunity for Council to consider site-specific zoning re uh, rezoning proposals to allow for the production of cannabis. The subject pro property consists of two buildings. The applicant is intending to convert the North Building to a production facility this year. The North Building was previously used as an auto repair shop, but has been vacant for some time. The, there is an existing lease on the south building. When that lease ends in 2020, the applicant intends to expand the cannabis operation to include that building. All production must take place inside the buildings. The buildings and the uses uh, within 
the buildings are required to comply with all provincial and federal regulations, dwelling units would not be permitted, and cannabis sales directly from the site would also not be permitted. Policy context. Uh, for the OCP, a, a diverse economy is a cornerstone of a sustainable, resilient community as identified in the OCP. The development of this property as a cannabis production facility allows for new business to establish and provides a new employment opportunity in our community. As noted previously in this report, Section 4.8 uh, of the Zoning Bylaw provides an opportunity for Council to consider rezoning applications for the proposed use on a case-by-case -case basis. And as per the Town of Asuyus Land Use Procedure Bylaw, uh, rezoning application signage was placed on the subject property, la um, subject land, notifying the public of the pending application. And notice of this public hearing was given in accordance with Local Government Act and the Community Charter as described by M Madam uh, Mayor earlier um, in the public hearing. Uh, so rationale for a recommendation, a subject, subject to public hearing feedback, staff recommend the proposed rezoning as it will facilitate the creation of a new business and potential employer in our mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. uh, implications for the community, uh, the community had opportunity to comment on cannabis grow operations in 2016 when medical marijuana operations were added as a discretionary use in the zoning bylaw uh, with site-specific rezoning in the M1 zone. Organizational, a building permit may be required following approval of the rezoning depending on proposed changes to the interior of the building. There are no impacts to the budget associated with this report. Uh, significant dates, following the public hearing, Council may convene into a special open meeting at which time third reading of the amending bylaws may be considered. As no changes to the facade of the building are anticipated, a development permit is not required. Sustainability. Town policy for an economically sustainable Asuyus includes uh, encouraging a variety of businesses, including pro production facilities, to locate in our community. And options. Uh, one, that council convenes into a special open meeting following the public hearing and gives third reading to Zoning Amendment Bylaw Number 1085.121-2019. Two, that council defers giving third reading to the amending bylaw until a later date. Three, that Council requests revisions to the amending bylaw before proceeding further. And four, that Council abandons the amending <coughs> bylaw and staff recommend option one. Thank you very much. Um, then uh, identification of correspondence received. Now we did receive two letters. Have this been, has this been, in, so is, I would read them. All right, so I will read the two letters that we have received on this issue. Um, Town Council Zoning Amendment Bylaw Number 1085.121. As the owner of the property adjacent to the proposed cannabis production facility, I strongly oppose this application. The, if the zoning amendment is approved, I fear that it will affect the value of my property negatively. When the day comes and I have to sell my property, having a cannabis grow up facility as a neighbor is going to make it so much harder to sell. From what I hear, there is a very good chance, th chance that when the lease is up next year in the spring for the big warehouse building on the same property, that it will be turned into a grow up as well, and again that will devalue my property. Already we have experienced very bad fumes coming from the smaller of the warehouse, so I can just imagine what the smell would be from a much bigger facility. There are already days where I cannot do maintenance around the building because of the stink. I also want to point out that Asuyas has a very unique industrial park like no place else where residency is allowed and there are quite a few people living up here as well as in my building. I don't feel that it is fair that my tenant and other families that live up here have to be exposed to these odors. When I took out the building permit for my building, it was required to put in green spaces around my property, which I have done, and created a beautiful garden for my tenant to enjoy. This is not possible anymore because of the odor. The potential for more crime in the industrial park with a grow-up facility is definitely a possibility, and I worry if they will use my property to gain entry into the adjacent building and target my own building. Since growing cannabis is now legal in Canada, it has created a new type of business and does the town have the proper regulations in place to monitor this type of facility? 
I would like to know under whose jurisdiction the odor, soil, and garbage falls. Is it the town or the province I would have to complain to? The applicant already shows disregard for following the rules regarding the display of the zoning amendment sign as it is attached on a gate which is always open during working hours and therefore hiding the sign. See attachment. I, I don't have that. There is also a pile of discarded cannabis leaves in gar plastic bags behind the building with a foul odor and I assume there are strict regulations to dispose of that type of garbage. Also, there are piles of soil discarded from the grow-up dumped on the ground, and I would like to know if it is contaminated and how they suppose to dispose of this. Although I know it's the industrial park, no contamination of any kind should be allowed. I encourage you not to approve this application. And the second one is it is with great regret that I have to go against another business, but when there is a potential for putting my own business at jeopardy, I have no other choice. Already the smell from the cannabis grow next door has caused several of our customers to complain to us, and our business caters to more than 10,000 kids each year, each year, and parents don't want them to breathe in the smell of cannabis or be exposed to it. We also reside in the building, and for medical reasons, we don't have air conditioning in our living quarters and therefore rely on open windows and patio doors, and the cannabis facility is only meters away from our bedroom, so we have to deal with the smell 24 hours a day. Our business, the Asuis Desert Model Railway, have air condition on the train room, and we worry that we have to install an elaborate air Filtration system at a great cost to us in order to eliminate the owner from the facility next door. What is the benefit to the town with the cannabis grow up versus our business which brings thousands of tourists to town every year and from the farthest away? We ask council not to approve this application. So thank you for those. And um, I will now ask if the, uh, is the applicant here? Yes. yes. Oh. Would the applicant like to come up and speak, please? Hi. Sorry. <laughs> Can you guys hear me good? Yes. I'm Dr. Nikki Filippuzzi. This is my husband, Jamie Filippuzzi, and we are both the owners of Way to Grow Nurseries. So I'd love to speak to all of these questions. I'm going to first give you guys a little bit of a quick history. I think we get a couple of minutes. So um, I am actually a PhD in criminology. That is my, um, my specialization. I actually was on the opposite end. I was helping law enforcement try to bust all of the grow ups and the illegal grow ups and all of this. Um, but about five, six years ago, I developed tumors on my spine and things in our lives changed. My husband suddenly had to become a primary caregiver to me, to our family, and he had to figure out a new line of work because things in life change. And when this happened, um, I became very, very sick. They put me on all different types of medications. Nothing, nothing worked. So we fell into this on the medical end because we found a passion, something that worked. So I, about a year ago, couldn't have even stood here in front of you. And so due to, thanks to a nice regime of medical um, CBDs and, and different products that I take, I am able to stand in front of you guys today. So that is where we kind of developed our passion from. However, um, these questions that they ask, and they're all legitimate, and I, have, I would ask the entire community to come out and have concerns about this, because we should. We should be concerned about our neighbors. But one of the biggest concerns about marijuana grow ups is illegal ones. What you're actually hearing about <laughs> are there's multiple buildings around us with illegal grow ups in them currently, okay? This is our problem, not the legal ones that we're going to regulate and we're going to work with the community to do everything that's necessary. So there is no smell because we can't. We are Health Canada. We are working with Health Canada and specifically, my husband can speak to the um, special different equipment that we are going to be, we're, we're doing a teardown. There can be no smell coming because we are doing a teardown. We are building a facility that is, it meets all of Health Canada standards. This has been two years in the works. The application to Health Canada was a thousand pages long that we submitted. So it is extremely onerous, onerous to become um, uh, in, in this industry and to be able to do it according to the laws to make sure everything is done right. Now the illegal ones are the ones that we can't control. Those are the ones that we should be concerned about. 
the legal ones that are actually going to um, do, the, do, do everything by Health Canada standards. For example, we actually went so far, and because of my medical condition and because of a lot of the work that we've done in this in industry, my husband actually took it upon himself to lobby in Ottawa with Hill and Knowlton. Um, our lobbyist is, a, is Ivan Ross. He is absolutely phenomenal. And um, we've worked with them to help lobby change for people in need. We are strictly medical no recreational. We do not agree with recreational in our opinion because we believe everything is for a medical reason. I mean, the reality is, is if you take it to get happy, here it's for a medical reason. If you take it to relax, it's for a medical reason. So what you should do is you should know what you're taking. You should know how the product affects you. This is what we're about. We are about community. We are about education. We are about providing the community with resources. Specifically, that's why I'm here to talk to you today. And a good example is we just went and sat down at your guys' beach, and you know the piano that's sitting down there? So I was a part of the first piano ever in Canada. And so we brought it over. The concept came from Europe. And uh, I had my students start a piano project in Cochrane, Alberta, and Red Deer, Alberta, and then Calgary. subsequently Cal Boys. Calgary and... The piano grew, and this is just unbelievable. The phenomenon has been absolutely amazing. And what did we watch while we were down there? All the community coming and playing that piano. It didn't stop, and it was absolutely beautiful. So this is what we're about. We are a little bit of a different facility than probably what you've maybe heard some applications or met with some others. And people are wanting to come in, and they want to make money. They don't want to follow the rules, as we're seeing with <laughs> some of the media around certain LPs lately. And one of the things we bring to this is a community. And we think that this should be about jobs for people. And that's my time, is it? <laughs> and it should be about health. And so um, my husband can speak to any questions about the, um, the smells, if there are any. But we do, uh, the facility he has done is completely to all the safe standards. It is designed to the highest security. So it's not been done yet because this is a process that mm -hmm. we need the approval first. Um, but we've worked two years. We have sent our approvals to the RCMP, notified community, and the gate. That was a little bit of an accident, how that one happened with the sign. So that is our, our fault. But unfortunately, there was an issue with it, and that's where it ended up staying. So we knew that the public was notified. And so it's not about following the rules. Sometimes accidents happen. That was a overlook. It was put on at night. No one thought about it. It is what it is. But... Um, as far as the smells, you can maybe speak um, to that. For the smells and stuff, we haven't been currently growing in there, so I know those smells are not coming from us. Our trials and what we are doing are fruits and vegetables because we are, are not registered, so we are not allowed to grow there. We are illegal. If we were caught, we lost a license. We've sold our house, all of our vehicles, everything to put into this. I wouldn't sacrifice it, so I can know those smells are not coming. The soils are recycled soils. They have to go out, air out, let everything fume, and then we use them back in there again. You're so that's that process. Explain we and do an R&D on systems for growing, and so that's why we have soils, which would make sense. However, everything has to be a by health yep. Canada um, We've designed and developed new growing techniques where plants can grow uh, within, say, six weeks this big. We can do it in two weeks now. Um, so we've went into agriculture. We're looking at tomato plants, fruits, and vegetables, not just the marijuana with this. Um, so that's what we were currently doing was R&D on our grow systems there and designing and developing. Um, within inside the building, we're not an open concept. Like most LPs, we are closed off. So within our building, there will be two more sets of walls. Um, our ventilation system that is in there will be in every single room. There's no smell that can get out of a room because that has to get out three more sets of walls. So the, every room will be separately run. There won't be no big. It's, con it's concealed inside and vented throughout its own <coughs> internal body. So nothing leaves, nothing gets vented outside. Um, as far as the security goes, working with the RCMP, um, with my wife on design, um, you know, we're not going to make this look ugly and hideous. We're going to put trees, flowers, make it look like a regular nice building, clean. You know, that's kind of what we're looking to do. And we're looking to be a part of this city. We want to give back to the charities, work with the City of Soyuz on programs, and not just be a business. We want to give back and help support and be a bigger part of this community. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor King? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. There, there was some comment there about the redesign of the building, so we were going to tear it down or just no. No, outside would basically look the same? Two more buildings, well, four more buildings within inside that building. Okay. 
So to for it to go through, you're going to have to go through multiple walls, multiple yeah. things. It's encapsulated. It's, and it's going to be separately on its own, so nothing gets vented out, nothing comes in. And you won't be renting out storage space at the nope. back for RV trailers. No, we're trying to get rid of that. <laughs> That's the whole case. Right. So the whole concept <laughs> is is we're here to clean that up. And so we would not, that's not safe. And so I actually created what's called the safe design standard. And yeah. so I patented the safe design standard a long time ago, which is a building standard to create less uh, opportunity, uh, less room for motivated offenders to be able to vandalize. That we have no control over, right? So at this point, we are going to buy that land and we are going to make it much safer. That only attracts crime. So when you have a bunch of junk laying everywhere, yeah. it's going to devalue your neighborhood. It's going to devalue your property. We have the opposite opinion. So in the safe design standard, what we do is we beautify a community. And so the better you make it look, the less attractive an opportunity and the less people are going to target you. And so that is the biggest problem with these groups. You're going to put in these big, huge, ugly walls and bar everything up. That's the wrong approach. That makes it more attractive to criminals. So you want it to be safe, secure, but designed to be a part of that community. Is there room to actually put a fence out front of this building? Oh, yeah. We're yeah. putting a whole perimeter fence, and it will be definitely, you can't crawl in the way you can now. <laughs> yeah, over time. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. We've put in the first marijuana uh, rebate program in place mm -hmm. in Canada. I worked with Fortis to do that. We're the first province and the first people to do this in Canada for all of us. Uh, they've asked me to chair up their division for Fortis. Um, to help with them work with efficiencies within this industry. Um, we're working on their second one with HVAC and AC units and developing a whole other re rebate program with that as well. Uh, we're using everything from our, our, our dehumidified water. We have a full water system. It gets circulated. We're using very little water once we get started off the grid. Um, we're working with them for different time frames to use our lights. So we're not using lights during the day when it's needed for AC units. Things so we're not pulling and taking the resources away from the town and causing any harm. And LED switch. That that was a major switch as well. So we only use LEDs, and um, we're also looking at a leasing program with even the banks to start working out uh, better programs so that we can keep this as energy efficient as pro possible. Good. Well, thank you very much. You've got into a lot of detail there. Right today, we're just looking at the mm -hmm. at the zoning. Um, the zone, what yeah. you would have to do later is uh, talk to the planning department mm -hmm. for sure and deal with uh, yep. with uh, building and permits and that type of thing. So, thank you very much. I will see if there's anyone else who would like to speak um, to this. Is there, Mrs. Hilson? Do we have anybody on the list who would like to speak to this? Thank you. So, um, John McIntyre, would you like to come up? Are you coming up by yourself, or are you bringing Shelley too? Uh, Shelley no? might come after me. Okay. <laughs> she speaks for herself, I speak for myself. That's okay, thank you very much. 26 Go ahead. years of marriage does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, quick question, how long do I have? Five minutes. Oh, okay, well, I'm a slow talker. Uh, no PowerPoint. No, nothing to hand out. I just want to say that in the 1970s, when I moved to Kamloops, uh, I noticed a smell. And I said, what's that smell? And somebody said, that's the smell of money. That's the pulp. You know, I lived in a pulp town growing up in the 70s and 80s. Uh, it was cool. It was all right. Uh, every once in a while, we had a funky smell. Uh, flash forward 20 years later, I moved to Cloverdale, bought my first home down there. I was two kilometers away from Money's Mushrooms. I bought there intentionally because I knew that eventually Money's Mushrooms would sell and that funky smell would go away. All right? And I was quite smart in that because 10 years after I bought my home, Money's Mushrooms sold, it became a strip mall, and uh, my house tripled in value. Uh, I'm not sure how well you know the uh, production of a marijuana plant. Uh, but the last month, it has a funky smell that smells worse than a dead skunk. And, um, that's just it. So I moved to Soyuz two and a half years ago. Um, I love my draw, drive from my work to home. I pass uh, a whole bunch of orchards and a whole bunch of wineries, and it's a beautiful drive. I ride a motorcycle. Uh, nothing to enclose. Uh, 
a couple of times a year I smell some fertilizer, but that's okay. I got nothing but green space and beautiful smells. Okanagan. Um, I only heard about this on Friday, thanks to Facebook. Uh, nothing against the council and your information dissemination, but I had to come here, take a couple hours off work, to say, um, please don't. Um, where it's going to be placed is north of town. Uh, I've noticed in the past two and a half years that the majority of winds go north to south. Um, my lawn chairs fly off my deck every every so often, and they're always heading south thanks to the strong winds. And if we're growing marijuana, well, I don't want to be associated to the funky smell of skunk. Uh, no offense to them and their business, it's the smell. Unless you're going to lower my property taxes, because that's what I think <laughs> is going to happen, is my house is going to be devalued. And for that, uh, that's all i got to say. Thank you. Did you yes, have a question? Yeah, thank you, Commander. I, I never got your address. Where do you live? Uh, 6216 97th Street. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. No worries. Um, and Shelley, would you like to yeah. come and speak? Thank you. Hi, I'm Shelley. I also live at 6216 97th Street. I, uh, when I did see this, my first thought was, Yes, we did live in Kamloops, and we lived in an area of town. It didn't bother us all that much. It was just when the wind was right. And my focus on this is the wind is right nine times out of the ten, because nine times out of ten, wind is going from north to south or from east to west. That encompasses our whole town. And I do know pulp mills have to have a standard um, they can't have emissions over and above, and still those emissions smell. You can't say it's totally going to be encapsulated because air does have to flow in and air does have to flow out. There is going to have to be some kind of emissions test if it's going to even be with the neighbors. It's always going to go where the wind's going to go. And that includes downtown. That includes your beaches, and that includes the orchards, which is probably fine. I'm sure the deer don't mind getting a little contact high if that so should happen. But I'm just concerned that other, uh, I would say mostly tourist, is going to be impacted in the summer because I would think with the heat, so would the emissions be um, more prevalent. Uh, so... That is my concern, is with the smell, with the wind direction, I would be happy to put it somewhere where the wind is go it's downwind rather than upwind from the whole entire town. Um, I think that's a big consideration. So thank you for hearing. Is there any questions? Thank you. Councillor Rhodes. Uh, thank you, Mayor McCord. I'll follow. So in the perfect world, um, oh, I heard both both of your concerns about the, the odor and mm -hmm. your comments about relating to the skunk is well taken and that kind of thing in the perfect world if that order was eliminated uh, you know I don't know whether that's possible I don't know anything about the technology I understand there's a lot of science going into correcting that order as it comes out of the building through filtration systems and that mm -hmm. kind of thing would you have any concerns? Oh, that, no, I would know, welcome you know. a business like that. I would welcome the money and the revenue it would bring to our business um, and of our town. Yeah. And I don't have a problem. The only problem is if that has an odor like even vaguely half of what the pulp mill is because basically my asthma shuts my lungs down halfway through my day when the pulp mill was blowing in the right direction. Yeah. I so just, if if the yeah. smell was eliminated or barely there or it was just once every second or third week and I could actually sit on my deck, I would have no issue. If it didn't label our town as a skunk town for visitors, I would absolutely. Why wouldn't you have it here? I'm all for growth of the town. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this issue? Ex the applicant? Yeah. All right. I will ask yeah. if there's anyone else who would like to speak uh, for the second time. And if the applicant would like to come back up, you are welcome to do that. Thank you. Um, excellent question. And honestly, I couldn't agree more. And I hate this. Excuse me, you have to address oh, this chair sorry. because <laughs> you're on TV. Oh. <laughs> so you have um, to speak into apologies. the microphone. Sorry about that. So actually, I have to agree. I, I can't stand the smell. I think it's absolutely repulsive. Um, but if that were the case, you would your your dwelling would already be encapsulated by the smells. So uh, having been a criminologist for this many years, I've worked many investigations, and we are very well aware of all of the illegal grow ups and the legal grow ups and everything that happens. And if that were truly the case, that would already be downwind. The town would already smell like skunk, and that would already be a problem. And what we're seeing is it's not. And the reason it's not is because what my husband can speak to is the technology side of things. And so you like go ahead. Even the technology has changed. Like we're Microphone. Work, we're, sorry. <laughs> uh, we're yeah. working with many groups in the states, engineering. Um, like the engineering alone was $250,000 to take care of that smell in that little building. Mm -hmm. um, this whole process is a half a million dollars with equipment and engineering to take care of that smell to ensure that there sure. is no smell. Um, and that is just the air. Um, we do not, again, our, we do not bring any air into the building. We do not let any air out of the building because we're medical. We have to control the environment it's in. And that's the only way to do it is if you control the air and fluctuate and f let the air flow within the room and clean itself. Um, every room is done, like I said, separately. Um, we put the most state-of-the-art facility uh, for smell and, and uh, equipment in that there is in North America right now or even in the world um, to take care of this. We didn't cheap out. Um, we've been about and spent an extra, you know, say on our light plan that we could have went, we put $200,000 more into an LED, not even knowing we're going to get this program in place for the power, just trying to make that difference and start it. Um, so we're not going to have opening doors. There'll be no ventilation. Um, as soon as you do that, you let pollens, contaminations into the building. So again, everything is in a concealed room, fully steeled inside, outside. Every crack, everything is done. Filtration just circles that air repeatedly. There will never, ever be a ventilation cycle within that. I mentioned that room. When yeah. you come in, you do a decontamination. Even when you, yeah, even within our facility, we have a decontamination room. To go in or out, it's a full ventilation, UV lighting, fans, charcoal filters, everything blowing you like a... So when you walk in, it's going to be like a blow dryer. It's going to flush you, clean you off, smells, anything on you, and then it'll be the same when you leave. It'll flush you, clean you, blow fresh air, circulate it, so you're not stinking when you leave our facility as well. Good. Thank you for explaining that. So um, I will now ask, do I, can I have to go through it again? <laughs> so I've asked the first and second time, is there anyone else for the third time who would like to speak to this issue? Okay. Thank you. Hearing none, I will declare this public hearing adjourned. Thank you very much. Um, we are...